Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Thursday night, and that means it's match preview show. But unfortunately, you'll have to put up with just my voice, my face this evening. Um, had a tricky week. Uh, you may have seen on Instagram, but we're not going to go into it. We are still fighting and still swinging. But it means that I didn't have a chance to track down a Wickham Wanderers fan ahead of this week's game when Gareth Ainsworth brings his men to Kent to take on Neil Harris's Gillingham. We all know this will be a tough game. Wickham still with a chance of getting in those Skybet League One playoffs with five or six games to go. Jules unfortunately dropped back into the relegation zone on Tuesday. Morecambe winning their game in hand against Oxford United to leapfrog us. So we are now sitting in 21st place with five games to go. Current form for both sides. Last six for the Jules. Lost one, lost drawn, one lost. So that is seven points from 18 available, which is not disastrous at all. If you look at Wickham, 14 from 18. It's four wins and two draws after a tricky period through January and February. They've really picked up again recently. Breaking it down further, home and away form. Jules, eight points from 18. That's a pair of wins, a pair of draws and a pair of losses. But it is no winning four on our own turf after them back-to-back -back wins that Neil Harris started with against Crew Alexander and Cambridge United. The chair boys on the road, it's exactly the same. Eight points from 18. Pair of wins, pair of draws, pair of losses. You guessed it. Um, generally, though, Jill's performances have picked up against those side in the higher part of the table recently, haven't they? If you look at our last three, Sheffield Wednesday, Accrington Stanley, Sunderland, all kicked off in the top half of the table. Drew with Sheffield Wednesday, should have won the game. Beat Accrington 2-1. Only got done by a 96th minute goal against Sunderland at the Stadium of Light last Saturday. So four points from nine available over them last three. And like I say, we're still staying in games, aren't we? We're not potent in an attacking sense, we know that. Um, but we're certainly giving ourselves a chance. And that's all we can keep asking for. Um, but yeah, no goal at the Priestfield since the 8th of February. And that was for Dane Oliver's winner in the 86th minute against Cambridge United. If you look at the chair boys, um, they were seven without a win through January, end of February. But it's now seven unbeaten. Five clean sheets in that time. So they're strong defensively. Um, they've beaten Crew, Doncaster and Cambridge recently. We have as well. Aggregate scores are slightly different though. Wickham 9, opponents 2. Gillingham 3, opponents nil. Three clean sheets for the Jill. So that's something to work with. So it, it indicates that it'll be two sides that are well drilled in their systems. Could come down to who's got the better attacking players. If you're going to sit here and, and, and talk about that now, you'd have to say you'd fancy Wickham. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at Wickham in more detail. I wanted to look at them fixtures over this seven-game unbeaten run. And it, it looks like they've changed their system. I think they played a back three when they beat us in October at Adams Park by two goals to nil. They took the lead, didn't they, very, very early on. Two nil up inside 15 minutes. Dane Oliver missed a penalty. That was really as good as it got for the Jules on the afternoon. Then Steve Evans' charges were beaten very comfortably. But looking at Wickham now, Gareth Ainsworth switched it up. They've been playing a 4-2-3-1 system. Um, for all of this recent unbeaten run, and they're very consistent in their selection. Strong core of the side. Um, David Stockdale, the goalkeeper throughout all of them. Centre-backs, Ryan Tafazoli, Anthony Stewart, very experienced, very good at League One level. Midfield trio, Josh Gow and Lewis Wing. Daryl Horgan, further forward in the number 10. I think a player that who, who can be underappreciated by Wickham fans. I, I think I saw a Wickham fan or I follow can't remember which one, but tweeting about it a couple of days ago saying that he's very underappreciated. Um, and it's been Sam Vokes as a lone striker recently. Like I say before, they were playing 3-4-3, 3-5-2. So Brandon Hanlon was playing. Um, but he's better make do with a place on the bench recently. It's understandable. Sam Vokes is very, very good at this level. He's probably too good for this level. Um, he's their top scorer, Vokes. Uh, 14 in 38 in League One. So a very, very good rate gunner. I've got one and two and a half. So you're looking at 20 league goals a season, just under. Um, but they've got goals throughout the team. That's going to be the concern for us on Saturday and saying we're going to have to be very good to counter. Um, Brandon Hanlon, former dual striker, has got six. Gareth McCleary's got nine from an attacking midfield role or wide role. Uh, Mametti's got seven. Um, Akin Fenner, I think, has got four. Big Bayo, who will be coming down for what should be his final appearance at the Priestfield. So hopefully he'll get a good reception before, during or after the game, depending on whether he does feature. Um, but yeah, Big Bayo set to retire at the end of the season. He enjoyed two very decent spells in Kent. Um, Tafazoli, we've already mentioned him. I think he's got four in the league as well. Um, Joe Jacobson, the captain, 
takes a good set piece, doesn't he? I think he scored three or four direct from corners in the last couple of seasons, so that's something to look out for. And they're all managed by football manager slash rock star Gareth Ainsworth. September will, will represent a decade in charge at Adams Park, which is phenomenal, considering the everything has to be done yesterday approach to modern football. It's a phenomenal achievement from Ainsworth. And I think you have to give credit to the owners as well for sticking with him when they're having tricky spells. And um, yeah, we wish him all the best, but let's hope he has an off day and his players have an off day at the weekend. 40% um, win ratio over a decade is very, very good at whatever level you're managing. Um, there's always been consistent progression, hasn't they? League two, they've gone through that, progressed up through there, uh, finished third in 2017 and got into League one. And then the jump from League One to the Championship was probably a lot quicker than even Ainsworth and Wickham fans had imagined. And uh, they won the League playoffs, didn't they, in 2019-20, the end of that COVID hit season where everything was played behind closed doors. Uh, and they were unlucky to get relegated out of the Championship, let's be honest. We know there were wise and wherefores for, for both the promotion and the relegation, but I'm not going to go into them. Um, people have to make the rules. People were going to be disappointed and people were going to be pleased with how things panned out and... Um, that to still beat the clubs that were in front of them, and they did it very well. So Gareth Ainsworth doing a phenomenal job at Wickham. Um, but yeah, like I say, let's hope him and all his players have a big off day come 3pm Saturday afternoon. In terms of team news for the Jills, Neil Harris did do his press conference earlier today. Him and both Ben Reeves spoke to the press. Um, there were some training pictures up as well, courtesy of the uh, official Gillingham Twitter feed. The likes of Gerald Sotole, Ben Reeves, um, Dan Phillips, Stuart O'Keefe, all pictured out on the grass training. Um, got a little bit excited. And then Neil Harris tempered that and said that Saturday's probably too soon for Dan Phillips. Friday afternoon, we'll make a call on Ben Reeves. But Stuart O'Keefe should be OK. Um, be a big difference, won't it? We, we were very good at Sunderland and Josh Chambers was very good in a, in a very difficult debut um, coming into a side that saw barely any of the football. Um, and he'll come on for the experience and uh, the lessons that he learned. Um, but we're a better football team with Stuart O'Keefe in it, aren't we, at the moment? He's been very good since he took the captain's armband after the departure of Carl Dempsey. Um, so it'd be great to have O'Keefe back in the middle of the park. Um, so yeah, in terms of Jill's team, it's not going to change too much, is it, for me? If Stuart O'Keefe's fit, he plays. So my team would be Aaron Chapman in goal. Conor Masterson, Max Emer and Jack Tucker as the centre-backs. Ryan Jackson and David Tatonda as the wing-backs. O'Keefe and Ollie Lee in the middle of the park. Ben Thompson in that number 10 role, supporting for Dane Oliver and Charlie Kelman. The bench, you'd imagine, will be pretty much the same as last week. So Josh Chambers would drop onto that bench alongside Pontus Dahlberg, Christian Magoma, Bailey Akehurst, um... Ben Reeves, if fit, and Tom Dixon Peters. So that would give us six. Um, let's hope that, that Daniel Phillips can maybe cause a surprise. He has done it before, come back early and anticipated, I think, didn't he, when he suddenly appeared at Hillsborough and played 90 minutes back in November. No mention of Mustafa Carriol. Um, but good to see um, Harvey Lintot and, and Gerald Sotole mentioned as people that Neil Harris wants to look at, whether that's in the league or in a behind-closed-doors friendly, something that has to be arranged to see them get minutes on a big pitch, as he likes to say. Um, so if we can get a couple of them, the likes of Sitol, Phillips or Carrio onto that bench. Oh, Robbie McKenzie was another one who's getting closer as well, but I'd imagine this weekend will come far too soon for Robbie, who's been out for the best part of a month with a quadricep problem. Um, but yeah, it's a decent enough 11. We just need more options from the bench, don't we? Especially in offensive areas. That, that could be another area of concern and potentially going through the final five games of the season. But we work with what we've got. We all turn up. We've got to turn up Saturday. We've got to be loud. We've got to be strong for them. We've got to sing and cheer the boys on. Um, it is five cup finals. I know it's a cliche and I keep saying it, but we, we, we've got to try and, and create a siege mentality. Um, we'll give it our best shot. I don't think Tuesday was as bad as, as some people thought. There was three teams that played their games in there and only one of them won. Wimbledon failed to beat 10 men. Fleetwood failed to hold on to a lead again. It looks like Easter Monday's going to be absolutely monumental, biblical. Um, but we obviously have Saturday to worry about before then and then Good Friday. So before I let you go and enjoy your Thursday evening or your Friday evening, if that's when you're choosing to watch this, if you're watching this, score prediction. I've had a look at previous fixtures at the Priestfield in the last couple of seasons. Obviously, 2021, we didn't play them because they were in a championship. 1920, similarly to to now, they turned up. I think they were top of the league then, early part of that season. 
when Steve Evans had just taken over and they were fancy to, to turn up and roll us over. Beat them 2-0. Michael and Jolly at the double. Remember him. Um, two very good goals as well, if I remember rightly. Second was our folly from about 15 yards into the top corner. Season before, 2-0 down, dead and buried. And I think it was Josh Parker and Tom Eaves scored the goals that rescued a point. So we do score goals against them at the Priestfield in recent seasons. Um, we know it's going to be tough. We're going to have to be at our best. We're going to have to be disciplined. We're going to have to stay in our shape. What we're going to have to make sure we do, which we didn't do against Sheffield Wednesday, which was a very good performance in our last home game, is take them chances when they come along. If I do that, I think we'll give them a game. I think we can get something. My head says one all. My heart is saying we pinch it by the odd gun. Um, one nil or two one. I'm not going to predict scorers because I'm not even 100% on the scoreline. But yeah, that is, that's what I'm thinking. Head says a score draw. Hart is saying we might just nick it, but we're going to have to be very good. I think Sheffield Wednesday turned up, didn't they? They'd taken 14 points from 18 on the road prior to arriving at the Priestfield. We were the better side and we, and we took a very, very well-earned point. Levels are going to have to be the same again. Right, that's enough from me this evening. And I'll say enjoy your Thursday evening or your Friday evening if that's when you're watching it. Myself and Boz will be there Saturday for a match day live. Hopefully Stocky will be there as well to join us at pre-game or at least at half-time. Um, tickets for Cheltenham, I have booked. I will be on the coach to the West Country next Friday. Fingers crossed that my luck in Cheltenham is as good as it was when I recently went that way for the festival of horse racing. Um, picked up some wins and hopefully I can pick up some wins next Friday as well. Um, it's enough from me this evening. Um, We'll see you Saturday, hopefully. But until then, up the jewels.